हेलो एवरीवन आई एम आदित्य एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल आदित्य टैलेंट शो सो आई होप यू रिमेंबर अ प्रोमो आई हैड पोस्टेड लॉन्ग अगो ड्यूरिंग द दीपावली फेस्टिवल I also hope you remember the video I had posted after that promo about great personalities of Indian history part 1 in which I spoke about Dada Saheb Phalke the father of Indian cinema I hope you remember that video I hope you liked it so and then subscribed my YouTube channel and shared it with your family and friends So wondering why I was talking about all that Today's topic is Great Personalities of Indian History Part 2. So I hope you were waiting for this video and were thinking where is part 2 when will I do part 2. I hope you liked the part 1 also. So let's get started on this video. So the great personality I am going to be talking about today is K S Ranjit Sinha ji. so he is ks ranjit sinha ji he was an indian cricketer and you, many cricket fans might know about him this is a ranji trophy related to cricket there is also a ranji trophy match every uh, a few in a few years or something so many cricket fans might know about him if you know about him Uh, comment down in uh, below this video comment and let me know so let's uh, go through some introduction before we know more about ranji the number of young people in our country who play cricket isn't small every school bank college factory and office have a cricket team or are great fans of cricket or even have a fan club for cricketers like virat kohli sachin tendulkar rahul dravid ms dhoni etc etc so cricket is the not only an example to show that our people are great lovers of sports and games today many indians are moved by the desire to become a very good cricketer master batting and bowling and become a great cricketer and play in international cricket like virat kohli or sachin tendulkar as i told even many of my friends want to be cricketers many people i know want to be cricketers most of the population wants to be cricketers in india so i hope you understood the introduction so now let's learn about ranji in gujarat's katiawar region there was a small state called navanagar in which there was a village called sarodar a branch of the royal houses lived in that small village ranji who belonged to it was born in 1872 ranji spent all of his boyhood in sarodar and then went to rajkot for his education it was in rajkumar college in rajkot that ranji started playing cricket however it was batting that ranji established mastery first the native of a village and then he was a prince of a small state and then ranji became the king of a great game so that was this was where he lived in gujarat uh, this place called navanagar's village sarodar and this was uh, this is a picture of rajkumar college where he studied and started playing cricket in 1892 ranji sailed to england for higher education in a university by the time he went for that he was a 20 year old teenager in those days a non english man had to study for over one year in a school and then he could enter a university of his choice accordingly ranji studied in a school called malvern college for one year and then entered cambridge university even when he was in rajkot ranji resolved to acquire mastery over batting and before he left to cambridge he became an expert in that art this devoted practice continued for years even after he left the university so this is a picture of man malvern college the school he studied in for one year before entering cambridge university 
and this is cambridge university where he started studying after one year of studying in malvern college Cricket is a summer sport in England and by May the winter cold comes to an end and in June, July and August there are long days of welcome sunshine. In those days more Indians played cricket than the Englishmen knew. There were no training schools and coaching camps for cricket in those days. Ranji got both opportunity and training only when he went to England. Ranji soon overcame many disadvantages and earned a general appreciation. He became a dear friend to many Englishmen. He was adored in the cricketing world of England. It was in 1893 that Ranji started playing first class cricket in England. From that year onwards until 1912 he played almost every season. After a break of 8 years he played for the last time in 1920. Ranji loved cricket greatly and had a deep interest in that game. He had an equally great desire to be in the front rank of the game. There were, these were the sufficient reasons for Ranji to reside in England. During winters Ranji used to visit India and stay in Sarodar for 4 months. In 1997 there took place a big event in Ranji's life. He assumed charge of government as Maharaja of Navanagar with the title of Jam Sahib. Power came to him along with power he had to shoulder the responsibility of administration. When summer came along, Ranji as usual stayed in England and played there only. When winter came along, he returned to India and personally took charge of the administration of his state. It would be wrong to just say that Ranji spent all his youth playing cricket. Cricket helped Prince Ranji Singh Ji to acquaint himself with the people. The First World War started in August 1914. For the next 5 years county cricket matches and test matches came to a standstill in England due to the world war. Army units from our country fought in the war. Ranji was not a professional soldier but he volunteered to serve in the army during the world war. It was a terrible war. It was necessary to prevent another war like that. Ranji had a honor of representing the princely states of India. at the sessions organized by the league of nations to maintain peace and prevent war in 1920 from the 18th century onwards there was always one kind of revolution against the british ruling our country in 1857 there was an actual fighting in many parts of the country Several kinds of agitation began in the early years of 20th century. The movement became stronger after the World War 1. Mahatma Gandhi forged unity amongst the people and inspired them with courage. The British government realized that it had no choice and had to surrender independent to India. but it was not at all ready to give up power to the indians as we have said earlier there are hundreds of big and small states in india the rules of these states help britishers in various way in order to express their views clearly and forcefully in return to this the britishers created an association called as indian chamber of princes ranji was unanimously elected as vice chancellor of the chamber This is evident of the trust which princes had in him. Thus Ranji earned the same honor in the political world also. This is a picture of the uh, chamber of princes with all the princes in it. After his own retirement from active cricket, Ranji took keen interest in training young cricketers, especially he is nephew Dulip Sinha ji we might learn about Dulip in any other video i might make another video of this as a sequel for this video 
so this is a picture of duleep sinha ji the nephew of uh, ranjit sinha ji many cricket people fans might also know him because he was also a famous cricketer like his uncle ranjit passed away on 2nd april 1933 in jamnagar he was then 61 years old this is where he passed away in jamnagar it is uh, located near rajkot where he studied in gujarat his death was felt as a great loss by three uh, statesmen of india the news of his death caused great grief in the entire cricketing world both in 1983 and 1984 when he was reading in cambridge ranji played for his university against oxford university in a match this is the picture of oxford university many of uh, you might know it because it's a very famous university many of you might also have heard cambridge university both these universities are very famous right now ranji was the first non briton to play again play for a cricket university in his first appearance he amazed and enchanted the spectators who were curious of how a dark man would play cricket at that time indians were discriminated and that's why those people thought like that Ranji started playing for Sussex County in the year 1895 and in 1899 he became captain of a team. In this picture you can see Ranji along with his team in Sussex. This that is Ranji sitting over there. Ranji made such a swift process in 1896 that he was chosen a member of the English team to play against the Australians. In an important match in 1895 between Sussex County and MCC at Lords, Ranji made 77 not out in the first innings and 150 in the second innings. In the four-month season of 1896, Ranji made a record of 2,786 runs in an average of 50. It showed a cartoon of Ranji in batting with his name spelled Rangit Sim Simha Ji. They had spelled it wrong. In 1897, Ranji made only in 1940 runs with an average of 45.11 an english team led by a e stoder toured australia during the 1897 to 19, 1898 this is a picture of uh, a e stoder ranji was a member of the team and unfortunately bad health plagued him throughout the tour still he played bravely in the few matches he could play Five test matches were played and England won only one of them. In fact, it was Ranji in spite of his bad health and his friend McLaren who batted magnificent magnificently. This is a picture of his friend McLaren. 1899, 1900 and 1901 were magnificent years in Ranji's cricketing career. In 1899 he played 15 innings scored 3158 runs at an average of 68.18 and stood third in batting for the world country An Australian team was in England that season Ranji played in all five test matches and second in batting with an average of 46.33 1900 was Ranji's marvelous year he played in 40 innings and was Five times not out. He scored 3,065 runs with an average of 87.57. Was first in batting. In a match where he played for Sussex in 1900, he made 202 runs in 180 minutes. In 1900, he made 2,468 runs with an average of 70.51. Being five times not out, he was third in batting and scored the highest score in first-class cricket. For certain reasons, Ranji couldn't play more than 26 innings in 1902. His total of the years came to uh, 1,106 and his average to 46.08. Yet he stood second in batting in averages for the country. Ranji's batting collapsed against the visiting Australians. Only one inning was possible in the first test and Ranji's score was 13. In the second test also only one inning could be played and Ranji was out for zero. He didn't play in the third test because of his sprained leg. 
in the fourth test he was out for 4 and 0 it was only that he was not selected for the final test 1903 was only a season of excessive rains ranji aggregated 1924 runs in 41 innings he was second in batting averages with 56.58 in 1904 he scored 2077 runs in 34 innings with an average of 74.14 As years went by, from forty forty six point eight, it had increased to seventy four point one four. He secured the first place in the batting averages this time. Thereafter, it was difficult for Ranji to play every year because he was often subject to ill health. He had also administrative responsibilities which weighed on him. For all three years in nineteen five, ninety six, and nineteen seven, he had to remain in India. It was in 1908 that he returned to English cricket. In the meantime, he had lost his limbs and slimness and put on some weight. Therefore, his style of cricket has also changed and become more orthodox. Strokes were no longer as beautiful as before, but his defensive play was as flawless as ever. The season of 1908, he played 28 innings and was not out twice. Totally a Total of a thousand one thirty eight runs at an average of forty five point five two, and was placed seventh in batting averages. For the next three years, in nineteen nine, nineteen ten, and nineteen eleven, Ranji had to stay in India during summers to maintain the administrative duties. His love to cricket drew him back to England in nineteen twelve. In that season, he was sixth in batting averages, having scored thousand one hundred and thirteen runs in twenty-five innings, twice not out, and an average of forty-eight point three eight. He stopped playing after nineteen twelve for eight years due to the First World War, as I had told before. It was in nineteen twenty that he played again. It was a very sad chapter in the life of. Uh, the history of a great player the total number of runs he scored were 39 that season he was 48 years old by then his body had become stout and had lost its stoutness he hadn't played first class cricket for 8 years and had lost one of his eye before ranji became the captain sussex was at the bottom of the list under his leadership sussex won match after match and rose higher and higher this is a picture of ranji as a captain in one of the cricket matches it was not merely that as captain ranji played a captain's innings and made runs he set the right kind of feeling for the opposite batsman he performed his duties as captain with skill courage and tact Ranji had encouraged many princes of Navaragar to learn the game of cricket. His nephew Dulip Sinaji was his favorite pupil. Ranji gave him a particular training in batting and showed him the finer points of the art of cricket. This made Dulip one of the best batsmen in the whole world. Dulip batted exceedingly well in one of his early matches in England and Ranji feared it might go to his head. So after his match, Ranji called Dulip aside and told him, "God has given you gifts that He gives to very few people. Remember this always. You are playing for your country, not for yourself. Thousands of Englishmen will be keenly watching you play. Hundreds will read about you in the newspapers. You will be an Indian in their eyes. Use the God's gift given to you in the interest of India." Ranji's life was a full life and a perfect character. That was the end of today's video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on Dulip Sinha ji after this video. I will surely make it if you request me to. Thank you for watching today's video. Hope sure you click that grey like button and make it blue. and click the subscribe button of my youtube channel and help me reach at least 1000 subscribers thank you